for being here. I love you. You're beautiful. Um, so Rob Burke asked me to do a seminar, and uh, up until last night, I still had no idea what I was going to talk about. And Laura was like, I'm going to build a presentation for you. She's already in chat. Uh, by the way, if you hop in chat, whatever you say is going to be up there. Uh, hopefully, people don't say super terrible stuff, because we will have to take that down. Um, Laura's going to put something together, but then I saw what she was doing, and it was, uh, it was actually making fun of me too much. So um, <laughs> we're going to just do a little bit of an AMA. Um, I get asked a lot of questions about like streaming, you know, what's the proper etiquette for like streaming in a bar, or um, what gear are you using, why are you using it, um, like how'd you get started, that kind of stuff. And I have, let me pull up my phone here, which has my mutes. Um, but at any point, please just ask questions. This will be an AMA. Uh, my wife's back there. What's up with Charlie? You're beautiful. Uh, Scott Denisi is on after us, but he doesn't have a voice, so I'll be interpreting for him, I believe, when he is up. That'll be exciting. <laughs> it's 3 o'clock. Jack Danger drinks Dr. Thunder. All right, cool. So we've already got the internet going here. That's beautiful. Someone wants to know if your name is actually Jack Danger. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Um, Jack, okay, so... Jack Danger is a name. There you go. All right, cool. It is a name. Um, so when I, I'm just going to give you a little brief history of what Dead Flip is. And if any of you also have an idea of how to, I have a bunch of tickets. Actually, Crystal, do you, do you want, or Laura, can I have you break tickets off and like hand them to people? Thank you, buddy. All right. So um, Dead Flip. Uh, when I first got started in pinball, which was like maybe eight years ago, um, I didn't know what pinball was, didn't really care what pinball was. I owned an animation studio in the West Loop of Chicago. And a buddy of mine, Brad Smith, bought a, a Lord of the Rings pinball machine. And he called me up. He's like, hey, dude, I bought this pinball machine. I don't have anywhere to put it. What's it? Oh, they're in that box right there. Um, and he's like, can I put it in your studio? And the studio was just being built. So I was like, yeah, we got room for it. Bring it out in. And uh, I turned it on, I flipped it, I was like, this is just electronic furniture, I don't really care what the heck this is. So um, he called me a week later, he's like, hey, I bought a, uh, a Judge Dread pinball machine. And I'm like, dude, if you don't have room to put these in your freaking house, you need to stop buying these damn machines. So we, we brought it in, and I, I put up the head, we plugged it in, and something about the shots on that game and the humor and like the animations and stuff, it just sort of like it like clicked for me and I, I, I was like, I'm gonna go on the internet and I'm gonna learn how to beat this game. I'm gonna learn everything about it and I'm gonna show my friends what's up. That's when I found out, well, you can't beat a pinball machine. And that's when I found out there's like so much nuance to like those two buttons that are on that game. And you know, that's where I discovered leagues and stuff like that. So uh, the myself, my friend Nick, Brad and Dave, we all worked in this like shared workspace that we had and we're like, let's start, let's start a, let's start a group, let's start a team. You know, we saw what the crazy flipper fingers were doing in Seattle, and we're like, they have a pinball gang. Like, we have to be Chicago's pinball gang. That's gonna be dope. Just the four of us walking around with matching hoodies. Uh, we only made five of these. Um, I'm sure we'll make more. I don't freaking know. But um, that's when the Chicago Pinball League or the Pinball Chicago League. I keep getting it wrong. Is it the Pinball Chicago League? Pinball. Well, okay. Yes. So. When that just started, we were one of the very first teams to sign up. We're like, we're going to do this. We're going to represent uh, Emporium and Wicker Park. And so Ben was writing everyone down. And we chose the bare minimum of players, which was just me and my three other buds. And uh, our pinball skills were still super, super rough. But we, we like swept that first season. And it was incredible. Like that, winning all that stuff just like fueled the fire of what needed to happen and to keep going and going and going. And uh, that's when we discovered like the pop of videos on YouTube and discovered that they were also like streaming on Twitch. Twitch was still something that I was fairly new to as far as like watching because I still didn't understand why people would watch other people play video games when you could just play video games and why the hell are they giving these people money, blah, 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 blah. Uh, th thank you for your money, folks. I do appreciate it. Um, but the, uh, so we're like, if we built one of these rigs, because we, we supported the Papa uh, Kickstarter that raised, I think it was like $10,000 to buy all this crazy equipment, um, like uh, TriCasters, you know, stuff they use for television stations that they had all this really expensive equipment. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, I think we could do these with like some shoddy webcams we have laying around and stuff. So we just grabbed everything we could, sort of cobbled stuff together. A lot of things were duct taped and um, 
getting a piece of software to rotate a camera 90 degrees was like a pain in the butt at the time. But we figured it all out, and it had to run on a Mac, which was terrible. But uh, when we fired up our first stream over a, a Stern Tron, everything was, like, the color was crap, the picture was crap, the audio was out of sync. But we're looking at this, we're like, this is dope. Like, now we can record ourselves to see what our progress is. You know, I want to play, and when I screw up, I want to go back and watch what happened. And um, when I... When I jump into anything. I want like I want to go as hard as possible. I want to I just want to know everything about it. And I dedicated I was like at 5 p.m. every single day. I don't care how busy I am. I'm going to fire the stream up. I'm going to play 2 hours m max. 2 hours max. The same machine all week. We streamed for Monday through Friday on a Tron. And then the next week Monday through Friday on an ACDC. I don't know how anyone watched that crap. It was so boring. Like I can't go back and watch that. It was like too much of that one game. Um, but doing that allowed us to completely explore everything about a machine, uh, like through accidents, through flips, uh, like one day we would just dedicate to only doing like flipper skills and make a game out of like, okay, we're going to learn how to post pass, you know, all right, I did three, all right, now I did four, my friend steps up, he did five, okay, now I got to be him to do that. And that in itself taught us how to play better, but then going back and watching that and seeing your mistakes was also huge. So. I mean, if anyone's looking to start a pinball stream, I wouldn't say jump in, uh, don't jump into it because you want to like, you know, make all this money or be big, by God, I don't make any money. But it's, uh, it's great for um, a learning tool, for watching the stuff that you do so you can learn upon that. It, it's really, really huge. And I'm not gonna lie, like, so this, this rig that I brought is a stand, a whole bunch of clamps, cameras, stuff. It's everything to get started and um, all in all, I'd say that thing was about $400, $450 to put that together. So, like, for anyone that wants to get in that, if you have a computer already, it, uh, it's a little bit of an investment, but it's not, like, back-breaking type of money. And you can buy it piece by piece, piecemeal. And uh, in that document, like, how to stream pinball that I built, I show you how to stream pinball. Like, if you've only got one camera, you can make this work. Uh, if you've got two, three, four cameras, you can make it work in any sort of layout, but... All you need is one. You don't need a microphone if you're just watching yourself play. But if you want to like actually interact with the internet, who's giving me money right now. Thanks, guys. I love you. Um, so once I, once I started doing that, uh, my dedication for streaming pinball every single day was like unwavering. But obviously, the other guys are like, man, I, listen, I got to work, or I can't do it this day. So seriously, everyone started falling off. I don't know when I met you, but I was looking through some old photos. And it was like from like October of 2014. Good. Good God, yeah. So I have a lot of photos of Crystal uh, hanging out at the old studio. And we had, we had some good times there, but man, our, it, like our, our setup was so archaic. Um, but when I first discovered that I could like sort of pack it all up and go on location, the bar that we represented for the, the Pinball League, um, Emporium, uh, you know, we were friends with them, obviously, because we represented their bar in, in the league. And Roper, who was the manager there, he's like, dude, like, why don't you do your show here? And that was our first, like, holy crap. Like, we can do this outside of just this weird little room that we're in. So I packed up everything. It was like a heavy desktop and monitors and stuff. And uh, I brought it over there, and we had to, we had to move a game out because I wasn't sure what the hell was going on. And the way my rig worked at the time was a giant light stand that had to be behind the pinball machine, come over the top of it, and just cameras duct taped to the top of the thing, aimed straight down. Uh, the microphone was crap, but um, setting all that up and all these lights, and we were using like fancy lav, like five, six hundred dollar lav mics at the time. Like it, it didn't make sense, like the weird balance of like equipment that we had. But uh, instantly, people were just coming up, going like, "Oh God, well, like what's going on? Are you like doing? Are you doing a blog? Is this a podcast?" And uh, that that was something else. I was like an aha moment, like. I would love to show other people how to play pinball, and this was such a great way to get people interested because they just naturally wanted to come over and see what the hell was going on. So to just like put those people in a headlock and be like, I'm going to show you how to, you know, be a great pinball player. So in about the pitch now is when I'm on location and someone comes over, I'm like, I promise you in five minutes, if you spend five minutes, one game with me, I'll have you playing pinball better than any of your friends right now in this bar. And then you can go beat their ass for some cash and then show them how to play, and then that becomes a cycle. And to this day, whenever I'm at like Logan Arcade or Emporium or any of the Emporiums, 
there's always someone there that's like, dude, I ran into you, like, do you remember, like, three months ago, you were on, like, Star Trek, and you show up, dude, this is my friend Steve, he's like, he bought a pinball machine, and uh, that's very humbling that, you know, that is sort of spreading, I would like that to spread a hell of a lot faster, but, the, you know, it's, it's moving up, it's moving up. Um, but my, uh, I'm just going to ramble, folks, if you have anything to ask, please, but uh, my, my first introduction to Stern was actually here at Chicago Pinball Expo when they revealed the Walking Dead. So the Walking Dead was like the big game that they were showing that year and they were setting up for the uh, the Stern party that they were having that used to be in that room over there but is y now gonna be here tonight. And uh, Jody Dankberg and Wason were coming out of a room and they were like holding these big banners or something and I was sitting there by myself with all my gear sort of duct taped together and I like hopped up and I helped them like move a banner out and Jody's like, oh, you're that dude that does those podcasts and I'm like, I, yeah, I guess close enough, but yeah, I do those podcasts. And he's like, hey, do you wanna, do you wanna like record the Walking Dead party tonight? And I was like, holy crap, let's freaking do that. So I went in there, they were setting up the games. I set up all my gear over the, the Walking Dead. Um, it was me and all the rest of my Dead Flip dudes had like wireless labs on again, way too much money for the audio stuff at the time. And uh, everyone that was there at the party, cause there was a lot of heavy hitters there at that time. And everyone saw those cameras, and they're like, of the like four games that they had lined up to play in the tournament, everyone's like, I'm gonna play on this. And that line was just incredibly long. And that was our first like major tournament that we streamed. You know, We got to see some of the world's best players duke it out on the show that we had. And when we like tweeted that that was happening, our viewership at the time, which was like maybe five people, like seven, if we had like 10 people, we're like, we're freaking killing it right now. Um, jumped up to like 40, 50, and we're like, what the hell is going on? Uh, because, you know, there was an interest in people wanting to see these people play games. My man. Growth. Yeah. Sure. So the, uh, the growth of the channel was... Uh, it was a slog for about a year and a half where it was like very, very minimal, very minimal. And um, I got partnered with Twitch really early, which meant like I had some extra benefits that a lot of streamers didn't. Uh, one being that I was able to be invited to these partner parties at the first TwitchCon that they were holding. It was the very first convention that they were holding. And I was like, cool, I'll go check this out. And what I learned at that event was that I, I don't know how to say this nicely, like preaching to the the pinball people, like we need you guys to watch, obviously, and you love to watch. And you're if you like watching pinball streaming, you're gonna watch pinball streaming. But to grow those numbers, that's that's sort of a finite number. You gotta reach outside of that pool to get, uh, are people trolling the crowd? I see Scott laughing, which means people are, oh, thank you for the money, Scott, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> um, I decided I was going to go spend like the next two years only going to video game conventions. I just wanted to go to like PAX South, <laughs> you, you sons of bitches. Um, uh, going to PAX South, uh, only reaching out to like people that didn't really know what this was. I'd bring a pinball machine with me to all these events and uh, bringing pinball machines to TwitchCon was humongous because like all these streamers coming up going like, what the hell is this? Like you could stream things other than video games. Like early on in Twitch, that wasn't a thing. So they're like, you're a partner and you're streaming this. Are you allowed to stream pinball? This isn't a thing. And uh, just peaking the interest of people that didn't know what this was, was huge for getting those numbers up. And uh, you could see after that first TwitchCon was a huge bump, like a huge bump in that. And uh, just for overall pinball viewership in general. And every year at TwitchCon, that is that is my primary goal, is just to reach out to everybody, get people in there, and just, uh, you'll, I'll see my numbers just spike like weeks after, you know, that event is over. And um, yeah, Crystal. Uh, Laura, Laura wants to know uh, when you gave up your day job. Oh my God, I gave that up years ago, bud. Uh, no, uh, my okay, so I was an animator for 15 years. I owned my own animation studio in the West Loop, like I mentioned, and um, it, it was great, I, I loved it, but it was getting a little daunting, spending 22 hours leaning over a tablet, like drawing every single day. And uh, it wasn't until 
I'd say last year that I was like, this pinball thing is becoming such a, such a job of its own. Like it's requiring so much of my time that we're going to just not take any animation jobs and see what happens. So all those hours that I was putting into animation, I was now able to put into like promoting myself and going to new events and like speaking to uh, pinball events uh, about visiting them and streaming there or like traveling to go stream uh, in other locations. You know, I was in Australia, I'm heading over to the Dutch Pinball Open in Amsterdam and that's all through the courtesy of the people that, you know, the community that watches the show. I can't afford to do that, but you know, the community helps me do these things. And um, it was terrifying for the first couple months because I was losing money left and freaking right. This, the, the rent on my studio, uh, maintaining games, needing new gear, because traveling with all this gear, this stuff breaks. Um, it doesn't break a lot, and that's why I've got this really awesome looking rifle case that gets me in trouble all the time at the TSA. But um, you do have to you, you do have to upgrade things, and I want my stream to look as good as it possibly can at all times. So needing to purchase that stuff is uh, a necessity. But we are now back in the green, which is good. So we can only go up from here. Yeah. How many days, uh, or how many days, how many hours in a day or a week or a month do you dedicate to pinball and streaming? And streaming? Pinball and streaming. So when I wake up at seven in the morning, I take my daughter to school. Then I go to my studio and I spend all day answering emails, plotting out new events and things that I'm going to do all day, and then uh, designing graphics for the show if I need to. And then when five or six o'clock comes around, it's six o'clock now. It used to be five o'clock, but I needed that one extra hour to like get the rest of my stuff done. At six o'clock is when I fire up my cameras if I'm on vacation or if I'm at home, and I stream for an undisclosed amount of time because I'm usually drinking. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Um, I aim for about four hours, but pinball is my day and night job. So I am always constantly working on that stuff to uh, make sure I'm bringing awesome content. Um, the, the stern reveals that I get to do, fantastic. Also working with Spooky Pinball. I love coming to your facility and showing those games off. Chuck, you make some amazing pinball machines. Uh, we got to get back on that, Alice Cooper, very soon. Um, what's that? Oh, dude, come on, come on. My man. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. So we came up with the name Dead Flip when we were trying to come up with like a like a tough like pinball gang name, like Crazy Flipper Fingers. We're like, that sounds stupid. Like we w we want something tough, you know. Uh, I love Crazy Flipper Fingers. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bash you guys. Um, please don't kill me. But the we were we were just looking through. Uh, I had this big notebook, and I recently found this thing like six months ago, uh, and we had all these like ridiculous names, like, oh, that's too tough, that's a little too, you know, you're trying too hard, blah, blah, blah. At the very bottom was the, uh, we wrote Dead Flip, just like whatever, but it was the name of a pinball maneuver, and it's the name of the simplest thing that you could do in pinball, which is not flipping at all. So uh, we're like, that sounds tough, and also it's like the descriptor for, you know, for everybody, it's like this is the easiest thing you could do. Everybody can do this, so uh, we just ran with that. Also, it fits on knuckles if I ever wanted to get more knuckle tattoos. So yeah, why not? Dead flip feels good. What do you see for the future of pinball? Well, thank you, Laura. You could just raise your hand, dude. You, you don't have to type in the uh, in the chat. Jack is mansplaining what dead flip is. Wow, you guys suck. Hey, I love you. Um, the future of pinball. Uh, there's there's no knowing. I mean, technology is getting crazier and crazier, so I'm sure once that stuff starts getting adopted, like, so you may or may not know that I'm also building a pinball machine, and we're, we're doing it under the guise of, like, we're creating a little mini documentary slash reference, and I'm using the awesome talents of people like Scott Denisi and uh, the, the secret Skype, I mean, Slack that I was invited to that, oh, I'm sorry, I won't talk about that. Yeah, got it, I'm sorry. Um, where everyone's like building their homebrew games, uh, like Ed over there with his Nightmare Before, or I'm sorry, with his uh, Ghost in the Shell. Um, I'm using them all as reference. So what we're doing is we're building a pinball machine with the caveat of I'm a complete noob. I know nothing of what I'm doing, um, but we're going to show any anyone can build one of these. Like I learned CAD and uh, I learned like visual pinball and how to properly print out a piece of paper to lay on a play field and all this stuff in about 21 hours. Like it's, it's not hard to learn this stuff to like build your own game. 
Uh, money is a bit of a wall there to like buy the mechs, but you can f like find old busted like Valley Williams mechs to use, you know, in your games just to like get the thing made. Stern uh, is hooking us up with all the parts we need to like get this game going. We could spend like months on a design on this, but we just wanted to like get the thing done. So we created a, a cute little design, got the mechs from Stern. Multimorphic is supplying us with the P rock boards to drive the whole thing. Um, but speaking to the future, wha what I wanted to get to was the, uh, we're, we're building this first game just to like pique everyone else's interest. Like anyone, anyone in here has, you all have an idea of like what you like on a game, what you don't like. You could probably sit down and maybe pencil in like a layout that you like. And this is going to teach people that you could just go make a pinball machine, which hopefully spawns some new designers because we, as much as I love designers, we're sitting on a lot of the, the, the same folks. <laughs> in some way with other manufacturers? Absolutely. I, I work with uh, pretty much everybody, which is a very unique position that I'm in. So, um, oh yeah, I did American Pinball's Reveal. Um, I did the Wicked Witch animations for The Wizard of Oz for Jersey Jack. Back when I first got into pinball, like I dove in head first. Um, also, Jersey Jack's back end menu system, that was all me. I designed the look of that colored grid thing. Um, I should probably come up with something for Stern because they're still using that dot matrix stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm open to working with absolutely everybody, so it, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, I do I, I have my favorites, but uh, you know I just. Uh, um <laughs> uh, and none of them have asked you to sign some exclusivity deal. Right, it, it's a very uh, like I mentioned, I'm in a unique position. Like I I'm allowed into manufacturing facilities for a lot of these folks. And they understand that I'm not going to be sharing that information, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it's very unique. It's a it's a very I, I I feel honored in that position. And pinball it shouldn't be a competition in that vein. You know, it's a rising tides raise all ships sort of thing. Yeah. It's uh, it everyone needs to build each other up, right? If we're fighting each other, this hobby's not going to freaking go anywhere. Uh, my beautiful wife. My favorite opportunity that's been provided me through this work. Um, huh. I don't. I don't pay for my drinks when I stream at bars, right? <laughs> Which is, uh, it's uh, that's quite a benefit. Um, I. What's that? <laughs> what is in Canada? Oh yeah, I went to Canada. Yes. Uh, I drove with Scott Denisi to Ed Robertson's house to drop off a freaking TNA. You know. Um, there's uh I've met more celebrities through being this pinball person than I have in any other aspect of my life at all. And I've worked on feature films, and uh, just it, the the hobby is so like eclectic and crazy, and there's so many great people in it. Um, but welcome back, Crystal. Um, but yeah, be, being able to meet people, uh, being able to go into these facilities where I get to see all these awesome people making these games. Um, seeing, the thing I don't like is uh, when they tell me the games that are coming out and then I don't get to play speculation anymore because that is a super bummer when you sit there and everyone's like, I wonder if the next game's going to be Bill and Ted and you're just like, oh, I can't talk about it. Um, it, it. I tell my, I whisper in my daughter's ear. So if anyone's spreading rumors, it's her. So, um, but uh, yeah, for the, uh, I'm going to jump back to the future thing really quick. When we, I'm going to build a second game after this first game. Um, this first game is just showing what's going on. But I wanted to learn how to build a pinball machine. But the second game, I'm reaching out to all of my super tech nerdy dudes who uh, they're like, we're going to go to Adafruit and we're going to be using flex sensors. We're going to be using like all these weird new technological little gizmos we could throw in a game. We're just going to throw shit at the wall, sorry for swearing and uh, just see what sticks. We want the weirdest things happening in this game. We want to come up with crazy mechs. You know, I want a spinner to pop out of the play field and then you shoot it. I want like just the craziest things going on in a game. Um, but I also want other people to come into this hobby designing stuff so we can, you know, we're not just sit Crystal, make go, go work for Spooky, you ding dong. Okay. You, he's, he offered you a job and a car. He offered you a car. Me. Right now, just go right now. Get off the stage, you're working. 
Uh, do we have any other questions? Oh, my absolutely my pleasure. I could I could see cameras uh, pointing at the player becoming a, a more like used uh, utility, sort of like Jersey Jack has them in all their machines. Um, a lot of people that when they first started uh, trying to build rigs after I I was like streaming for a while, they're like, "Have you tried this? Well, like putting clamps for cameras on on the machines to like so it's totally hands off. Like clamp a camera to the the back box and aim it down at the play field and then crop it weird in a thing and it sounds good in theory, looks great on paper, but when you play a pinball machine, everything's vibrating, everything. So to get a constant feed out, everything's just like sort of doing this. Because when you're just when you flip, zzz, when you when you're nudging, everything's shaking. To like bracket that down completely and not get that sort of like wavering disturbance is something I cannot figure out, and I haven't seen anyone also figure it out. So if you know the answer to that, let me know. Because uh, that would reduce a lot of the freaking stands I got to bring everywhere. Um, uh, how are we doing on time? So we can pull some Five numbers and shit. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. Uh, Dan, I'll holler at you later. It's fine. Well, um, do we? How many of you bought a raffle ticket for the Project Pinball thing? I think they're all purchased. Five hundred tickets, and only three of those people are in here. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, internet. Did did any of you buy a ticket? Okay, we got Bill, smart dude. The chances are high. Yeah, three people bought a ticket, so we're gonna see what happens. Um, oh, is this the <laughs> is this the game coming in? Yeah. So um, we're gonna be pulling a name soon, and the winner is going home with that bad boy. It's a refurbished uh, World Poker Tour. There's a question yeah. in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! It's a Vault Edition World Poker Tour. That is to win this pinball streaming rig that we have here. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude. Bro, 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 bro. Smart dude. Yes, Laura. D did I <laughs> say I was going to explain it? Okay, yeah. So um, a lot of people that are new to my channel, they're like... Uh, uh, it's a thing like if you subscribe or what I, I'm like flippers in butts up. It's it's ridiculous, I know. Um, but the the butts are grounded in pinball. So when uh, before yeah, thank you for the flippers and butts in chat. So I used to just say flippers up, you know, when people would subscribe, and then we added the butts later. The butts are a reference to uh, everyone's favorite pinball machine, uh, WWE. You know, I'm sure everyone's played that game. Stern's WWE. Um, the extra ball animation in WWE is two butts coming in from off screen smashing each other. So if you've ever gotten an extra ball, it's, uh, and I'm guessing, I don't know whose butts they are. It's actually just mine. two butts smashing each other and then it just says extra ball really big. So we, uh, we, just took, we just took the butts for ourselves and here we are. So that's the butt story. It's pinball, it's pinball, so don't, don't sweat it, don't sweat it. Uh, where did Mardude come from? Where did Mardude come from? Oh, I was drunk and said my dude with a s slur. I <laughs> <laughs> nice butt story, Jack. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, do we have any other questions? My man. So, yeah, do I enjoy streaming on location or in the studio more? Uh, it's, it's a mood-based thing. Um, I like streaming at the studio because I can uh, put on stupid costumes and just like <laughs> just be like a complete freaking idiot. Um, but location streaming is probably my favorite because uh, everyone's around you. You're exposing this. Uh, we'll take like imp like Emporium in Logan Square. They've got like maybe 10 pinball machines, 10, 12, something like that. Um, but it's mostly that bar is for people that just want to play pool 
and want to play ski ball and air hockey and stuff. But when I set up my stream there, uh, if you watch one of those shows, you are going to have a list of names this long of people that we came over. We're like, what's your name? Teach them how to play. They leave, bring some friends back. And it's just a constant thing of like teaching these people what's going on. And the reaction is the same every time. Like when they're playing, I'm trying to be as excited for them as humanly possible so that they are also excited. So I'll let them play their first ball just to see what's going on. And then if I can like through coaching get them to like cradle the ball, right there is a great opportunity to be like, you are now a better pinball player than like half the people in here. Like you're cradling a freaking ball, you know? Like no one else, look at that person over there like using his feet to flip. Like you, you just like, you've cradled the ball, that is a great step towards like learning how to play better. And uh, if they're doing pretty well, showing them how to do a post pass is actually not that hard, especially for someone who doesn't know anything about pinball, the, the, the like nerves of like, oh, I'm gonna drain or uh, like my score is gonna suck, they don't really care about that. So showing them how to post pass, when they successfully do it, like punch them in the freaking arm, you know? Like they, you just did something so incredibly important to like learning how to play. And when they show that to their friend, it's like black magic. Like the fact that you stopped this ball and you, you moved it over here with these two freaking buttons, is incredible. Yeah, location streaming is just tops, absolutely. And this guy has a question. <laughs> yeah, right. There's well, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and there was most of your pinball machines were in pool halls and bowling alleys. Oh, yeah. And that's where I learned to play it as a little kid. So Drinking and playing pinball. So, so uh, for me, it's a bell curve. Um, I'm like here when I'm not drinking and like two beers, I'm like here with my skills, like it's, I'm really good. But like when you drink more than that, it, it, it starts to like fall back down. But when you're drinking, you don't just stop drinking. That, I might, that sounds like I have a problem, but like you, <laughs> you're at a, you're at a bar, Wh when you get here, you're like, man, I'm like killing this. You, know, you just enter a zone where you can't be stopped because like you're, I don't know, your nerves are gone. Um, and maybe you're flipping when you shouldn't, but it's working perfectly for you. Um, but what? But when you're doing one of these, you know, you're just like, eh, this isn't doing anything anymore. But uh, yeah, I, I play better with a few beers in me, but I, ca I can't just have a few beers, so. There's, <laughs> there's a question in chat about uh, internet like speed and being in bars on location and the challenge of dealing with that kind of stuff. Wait, one more time? Like the challenge of dealing with internet and like. Oh location. yeah, so therein lies the big thorn in the side of streaming on location is the internet. Uh, or uh, yeah, so or anywhere because like whenever I uh, go, if when I, okay, so I opened up my new studio, it was like a five month argument with Comcast to be like, I know my number says a hundred, but it's not a hundred all the time. It's like two, like hundred and fifty, like thirty. When you stream, you need as clean a line as possible. No noise on the line. Uh, when you're on location, if you're in like a crappy dive bar that doesn't have Wi-Fi, like how do you stream pinball and you want to be there? Um, I invested in a uh, Verizon hotspot. Uh, I, I think it's called the Jetpack. Uh, if you put I think there's one on the table here somewhere too. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, that is great if you have a solid cell signal. Uh, if you don't have a cell signal or uh, good internet where you're at, you just record local and upload it later. Um, if if I don't have a good cell signal or Wi-Fi, I just get angry and like throw all my gear in the trash and freaking go home because I like I th I live for the the live experience. I want people to tell me live that they think my hair looks stupid, so I can tell them that they're stupid, and then it's a bad argument back and forth. <laughs> um, but yeah, invest in a hotspot. The only problem, and that's where uh, the 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 money comes in for streaming. So. This has expenses, and <laughs> why you got? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> your hair is stupid. Thanks. Um, my cell phone bill is like almost three hundred dollars. Um, it's bad, and that's with uh, when I'm streaming on location and I have to use my hotspot. I also have to drop my bit rate down so that my oh yeah, there's a hotspot right there. So you just like connect your computer to that bad boy, put it up as high as you can, and then go for it. Um, but it is part of your cell phone bill, so it's going to be expensive. Um, but you just drop your bit rate down, which affects the quality, which, like, on f everyone else's end, like, you know, 
I can watch this, but it's not as like crisp as it should be. So there's a there's a lot of dancing there, and um, yeah, I don't know. Just buy buy a freaking house pot. Put foil on an antenna. Yes, cool. There was a question about uh, it says what liability precautions do you take when in public with random people on camera? Ah, yes, liability. So um, like any filming that you do in public, you should have a notice that people are being filmed. Because if someone finds their likeness on, you know, like this Twitch Fails website, which is a thing that goes through Twitch and finds stupid stuff people do, and then they become like this big meme and they didn't agree to be on the show because there was nothing to sign, there was no, when you stream on location, just print out, it's a very simple form that says you're being filmed, right? Slap that somewhere for people to see and you're good to go. Um, some places don't care. Uh, but it is a really good precaution just in case. I mean, if you're just a person, w I don't know. I don't want to tell people to be last day school about it, but like print something out, slap it up. Even if you got to put it on the freaking machine next to you, just put it there just so people, you can be like, you're being filmed. Usually uh, I will have something I like in a small format of that, but when I grab someone over, I'd be like, you're on the internet. So if you have a warrant for your arrest, you can leave now or stay here and play pinball and you're going to be good to go. I'm in. Someone wrote, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm very trusting with my gear. Very trusting to the point where if someone is even remotely curious about stealing something, uh, wanted to, they could just walk away with everything. So if I'm, like, playing, I'll just grab a stranger from the bar and be like, hey, do you know what pinball is? No, check this out. Sit here, play this game. I need to go take a piss. And uh, I'll come back, and they'll be gone, obviously, because I scared the shit out of them. But, like, the cool people, will, like, they'll still be there playing because they, they'll have realized that the Internet could see them and they could talk to uh, the people sitting there. Um, but I, there's been many circumstances where uh, people will say mega terrible things, and I'll have to delete the video immediately because I can't control what people say in public. Um, or... There, there was one circumstance, I was streaming at a place called Lemmings, and these uh, two drunk ladies came over, and they're like, are you YouTube famous? What's going on? And they're like, uh, like pushing me around while I'm like sitting there talking to the camera, and they absolutely shoved me out of the way and were just like eating the microphone, screaming at people, and uh, just terrible, terrible, terrible stuff, and I just had to like pull the plug on the computer. I'm like, the there's no salvaging what's going on here. You're obviously not leaving, and I, I can't do my show right now. Um, and there's also circumstances where the bar will just get too full and I'm sort of getting pushed around while I'm playing and I'm like, I can't really work on what's going on here. But I've never had anything, I take that back, I have had a few pieces of gear stolen over the years. Uh, nothing too crazy, but um, the, the, the biggest catastrophe I've had was like someone spilled a gin and tonic on my laptop once. Um, and the thing still works, so uh, whatever, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Should we uh, do... You want to pull your raffle really quick, and we'll ask a few more questions. Yeah, bring that uh, bring that up here. Um, so I currently have about 17 pinball machines in 400 square feet of space, and we need way way more space. Oh, this is for the game, bling bling. Uh, but all of our pinball machines, again, a unique position we're in. I am a pinball babysitter, so uh, people who watch the show donate games. They'll have them delivered to the studio. I'll play them for a while, put up a big score, send them back on their way. So we have an ever-rotating collection of pinball machines. Uh, Stern only recently started uh, dropping off all of their new games as they're coming out, but we are so out of room. They're, they called me like a week ago. They're like, hey, I got a Deadpool premium coming your way. And I'm like, cool, I don't have freaking room for this, so send it back. Like I, And who the hell does that? But Ever since I started building this pinball machine, I am so beyond out of room. It's it's crazy. All right, we're gonna we're gonna pull a number here for the people that are gonna win this. Th am I on this list? Did I donate money to you? I don't think so. So how how, how do you want to do this? We're just gonna ask Siri to generate a number between one and five hundred. Well, before we do, we want to thank Jack Danger for everything that he does. No, 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 no. Jack does so much for the kids' charities, not only Project Pinball, but other kids' charities out there. He's uh, constantly coming up with great ideas. We did the thrill at Stern Villa, 
with Jack. We raised two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars in a matter of a couple hours. Yeah. That, yeah, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. And I think uh, we you might see another one of those pretty soon too. It was pretty cool. Well, it was very cool. We had a lot of um, new people coming in. They weren't aware of the two charities that were being, you know, showcased that night, and it was great. We got some good feedback, and it's all because of Jack and Thank what you. he does. Yeah. So, what a great guy. No, 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 no. Don't clap for that, please. Uh, we're good. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I asked for that, actually. Yeah, clap louder, please. Clap louder. He's okay. modest sometimes. <laughs> With the World Poker Tour, um, this was donated by Rob Burke from the Pinball Expo. So if you see him, please pat him on the back. Give him thanks. This was made possible by his general generous oh, donation. So, oh, wow. Okay, what we did was we sold uh, $10 entry tickets, 500 of them. And we're, we were able to sell them out quite quickly. And we have a donor match. So every $10 donation became 20. Oh, damn. So how Dude, about congratulations. That? That's awesome. So we have all 500 names here. I have a number generator. Wait, why is this one sheet yellow? I have no idea. Oh, okay. They these ran these out are of the paper. Actual winners, yeah. Some are heavy card stuff. Yeah, what too. is Did all this? <laughs> this is like generic uh, regular lead. We paper? had to throw it together <laughs> this morning, like so no right. coffee. So you're going to randomly generate a number? Oh, oh yeah, there it do. is. Right wait, there. between one and t wait. I got to set it up. So hold on. Oh, yeah. Between one, one in 500. There it is. Verified. So all we got to do is hit that button, huh? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it in front of the camera here. Do it. That looks good. Yeah. All right, good. All right, drum roll. 352. Let's see who it is. Oh, wait, we got, we got Okay, we have a winner right there. Yo, do we have a Brad? There's no Brad in here. All right, no one won. Uh, Bra <laughs> Brad Griselka. Does anyone know Brad Griselka? Internet, are you Brad? Are you Brad? Why does this microphone sound so much better than the one I was using? Hey, ooh, Brad Griselka. <laughs> uh, anyway, Brad, you won. I don't know how the hell we're going to get a hold of you. I'm sure Dan will figure it out. <laughs> we have their contact oh, information. Have information, no problem. Right. Okay, we do this right. professionally, <laughs> <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like it at times, right. especially with these live drawings. <coughs> we need to take some lessons off of this guy. All right, Crystal, type, type the clipboard. It's at the top there. Mardu. Yeah, a, a box story? Oh, God. You want to use my microphone? Yeah, yo, give me your microphone. Hey, everybody. So, um, Thank you guys. Dan, love you, buddy. What time is it? 11.54. Okay, so we'll make this quick, and then we'll draw the number for the, the rig here. Um, there are several box stories. Uh, sometimes when Stern drops off a brand new pinball machine, <clears throat> and uh, you take that game out of the box, like any young child would with a giant box, you want to climb in this thing, right? Um, so... I will, I will make it my job to like play pinball, drink, and figure out what fun things I could do with this, like sitting inside of it, maybe sitting on top of it. And more often than not, it will break while I'm sitting on it. And there was one moment where I was by myself in my studio streaming, and it collapsed on me in such a way that I sunk down, and the walls came in down and in front of me, actually trapping me in the box where I could not, no matter what I did, get out of this thing with me just flailing while people are watching me going, what the, <laughs> the actual hell is going on here? 
And it took me like rocking back and forth to like fall over to try to like slink out of this to like finally get out. But I, for a good like 30 seconds, I was like terrified for my life that like I w- that's where I was going to die. Like I was done. Were you or were you not wearing a full body suit? It doesn't matter if I was wearing <laughs> a full body suit. Anyway, let's pull the raffle ticket for this. Laura, do you have the numbers? All right, folks. Whoever wins this, again, congratulations. There's a lot of gear here. We've got um, we got a, a, a blue snowball, which is the microphone I originally used. Uh, all of this is brand new when I say originally. Uh, this is all brand new gear. Uh, blue snowball. We got a, a microphone stand with all the appropriate clamps to hold a camera up top and, and a camera for it. And then a camera for a DMD or LCD with the uh, the all, all of it's in there. Uh, an entire rig w- waiting to go. You plug that into a computer. It's ready, and I'm happy to help whoever gets it to make it happen. I didn't get a ticket. Oh, Laura's going to give tickets to uh, everybody else here, too. Yeah. Charlie. Psst, come here. Wait, what? <laughs> Charlie, I've been meaning to tell you this, brother. Here's your daughter. <laughs> All right, damn it, I'll take care of her. Yeah, if you didn't get a ticket, uh, raise your hand or go to uh, that very short young lady over there. You didn't get a ticket? Internet, if you didn't get a ticket. Keep your hand up. And now Jack's seminar on prostate exams. Yes. Th- okay. So the <laughs> I love the Internet so much, guys. Uh, I just really quick... Before I pull this, I want to say thank you all so much uh, for everything. Like this started off as like a simple little thing that I did, but through the the support and the viewership and the everything from everyone here, everyone on the internet, like I can't do this without you. And uh, thank you so very much for like helping me generate this content that I do. So uh, I love you, and I hope you all win this rig. <laughs> Just make sure to share it with each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You could do it through blood work these days. Okay, awesome. I, is that it? Did everyone get a ticket? This young lady needs one. Did you get a ticket? No? All right. Are you going to have her pull it? Why? I had the, uh, Yo, Laura, there's a hat right there in that box. So how's everyone's expo going all right? Oh, yes. What do I think of virtual pinball? I think that it's it's coming along. Um, I was one of the, like, absolute screw virtual pinball. I think playing it's going to make me suck as a player. Um, playing, like, the video game pinball on your phone and stuff, you know, that was a great way to kill the time you, when you're sitting on the toilet and you want to learn rules and stuff. Um, but the, like, the actual physical cabinets, like, I was never really sold on it. But the folks at Zen Studios that make pinball effects, they sent me this uh, virtual pin. It's called like their championship cabinet or whatever. It's still in beta. But they sent it to my studio, and they're like, just give this a shot. And when I plugged it in and I turned it on, I'm like, yeah, all right, here we go. But the second I, I flipped a flipper button, I felt a coil fire in the game. Like they put actual mechs in this thing where like the biggest concern was like, I want to feel it. No, I need to feel the ball. I need to feel the... And they put actual coils in there, so when you flip, it fires. There's a shaker motor in there that moves a little bit when it's like hitting stuff or riding rails, so you feel the ball a little bit in there. So it's getting close. Uh, I don't think it's there yet, but it's getting really close. The video game stuff is video game stuff. Like that, that's fine. But yeah, the 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 physical virtual stuff is it's close, but it's it's not quite there yet for me. I think the video game stuff is 100% getting new people into it. I know so many people that tell me that story. It's like Pinball Arcade is what got me into looking for the real machines when I found out like Medieval Madness is an actual thing I can touch. Yeah, a lot of people get into that story. So I, like huge props to those companies for like putting those things out because like, it's working. Smart dude. All right, I think we're going to pull a ticket here. Are you ready? Okay, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Diana, can I hit you with the microphone? No? Yeah, I'll 
Okay, cool. So the number is, and I think the first three numbers are 148. Woo, that's right. Everybody. All right. Nine, one, four, three. Listen, if it's nobody, I'll. She doesn't get it. Get that out of here. How did you choose your own number, you ding dong? <laughs> she said she wanted it. You get to keep that ticket, okay? Can you grab another ticket? <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's rigged out of control. Wait, Charlie, I need the ticket that you just pulled, dude. Not that one. I need, let me read. <laughs> okay. 148. Woo! 9162. My man. Yeah, dude, congratulations, dude. Hell yeah. Hold on. Let me uh let me show you what you got here really quick. So, this whole box essentially is yours. Um you got the uh the microphone stand. This is a powered USB hub, cameras galore, microphone stands, clamps. Um that's all you, brother. What's your name? Austin, pleasure to meet you, brother. Um, holler at me on the internet, and if you need any help, I'll, uh, I'll help you set the stuff up. Dude, congratulations, brother. Cheers. All right. Well, internet, if you have any, well, I'm sorry, audience, uh, fan, friends, lovers, uh, do you have any other questions before we uh, pack this up? I'm going to be here all day, baby. Make sure that you're here for the, uh, the Sternorama thing tonight. It's free beer. Is it free beer? Okay, it's free beer. And I'll be hosting it. I think it's in here. Yeah. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so very much. Make sure to come back for Scott Denise's talk. You're beautiful. Have a wonderful day.